Whenever I go to a record store, there is one thing I do before anything else. Whether you are new to collecting or you've been doing it for far longer than my 25 years, I'm gonna explain why I think this is the first thing that you should do as well. But first, I wanna tell a little bit of a story as to why this kind of matters. And for that, we're gonna travel all the way out to Mount Vernon, Washington. I lived in this town for about a decade. There's a little store in downtown Mount Vernon called Lost in the Groove. And over the years, I got to know the owner. And one thing always bugged me about this shop. But I got to know the guy and we ultimately exchanged information. And he began calling me every so often, usually when he got in something that I would possibly like. Lost in the Groove sells, to this day, predominantly used vinyl. And he'd give me a call and he'd say, hey Andy, I, I got something in. It would typically be like anywhere from, oh, you know, I got about 10 records in to 50 records, or even like I just got in a batch of about two, 3,000 records uh, if you wanna come take a look. And usually he'd rattle off a few names and if they were things that I was kinda interested in, I'd just be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, Set that aside for me. I want to I wanna get that. One of my favorite albums that I've covered here, Blonde Redhead's Misery is a Butterfly. There's plenty more where that came from. One of them is right here, The Seeds and Future. Now, I picked up a few albums by The Seeds. Of course, the self-titled one, which most people will be familiar with. But this one in particular, I have not really seen out in the wild all too often. It's got a few great songs, March of the Flower Children, Travel With Your Mind. Uh, one of my favorites is Painted Doll. Kitty, what are you doing? You've got this one right here, Mud Honey's Super Fuzz Big Muff. I mean, classic, classic grunge. Kitty, stop it. Another really great one that I picked up from him is this original pressing of Bubble Puppy and A Gathering of Promises. I think this is such an underrated album. I think it's from like 1969. Hints of, of psychedelic rock, but it's just pretty much just good, solid rock, period. This came out as a reissue on Record Store Day. I've seen a few people in the vinyl community talking about it, but this here is an original pressing. Gandalf by Gandalf. This is true psychedelic rock, 1969. I could not help but pick this up. I had no clue who the band was or anything like that. Oh my God. This is one of the more valuable pieces in my collection and it's really, really good. So those are just a very, very small amount of examples of albums that I actually was able to score from him calling me on a regular basis saying, hey, I got this new stuff in. And finally, if you watched my top albums turning 20 in 2024, you might recognize this one. Franz Ferdinand's debut LP, self-titled. Oh, so good. And I got all kinds of stuff too. I mean, I got a lot of chants on from him. Some, you know, Francois Hardy, uh, Serge Gainsbourg, other deep psychedelic rock, a truckload of early garage rock, stuff that you'd find on Nuggets compilations. Sonics, got plenty of Sonics from him. Stone Temple Pilots, Smashing Pumpkins, lots of really great stuff. So now you can see why I absolutely loved having this connection. And there's a key piece in that story that ties directly to the first thing I do when I go to a record store. Most shops have them, but not every shop. My shop in Mount Vernon did not have one and it absolutely drove me nuts. I let it slide simply due to the fact of the connection that I had with the owner. Even some shops that do have them don't have them for all genres. Josie Records, for example, has one, but it doesn't have one for modern used. All right, it's time. Enough waiting, enough stalling. I always go straight to the new arrivals section. This isn't new, new pressings. This is new used albums that have come in. And there are a few precise reasons why I do this and why you should too there's less chance that it's been picked through. So you have the ability to find some things that probably wouldn't stick around long enough to hit the regular bins. What does that mean? Well, that means it's easier for you to potentially find grails in there, deep cuts of stuff that you typically wouldn't find anywhere else, simply because it hasn't been sitting on the shelf for weeks or months. 
That's what I do. That's what I think you should do, of course. As always, this is just an opinion. So if you do it a different way, you be you. Do your thing. So long as you're supporting the artists. Next, let's dig into why I think it's actually a good idea to start a record collection. And I do that right up here. As one person said in comments many moons ago and also just the other day, Gary, I'm talking to you. This dude is a damn nerd. I'm Andy. This is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel. I'll see you in the next video.